Hello, humans, and welcome to another episode of Gen X Gamer. Oh, Billy, 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 Billy. Well, let's talk about Billy Mitchell and the connection it could have, right, to the situation with Carl Jobs and the completionist. First of all, Billy Mitchell. What can we say about Billy Mitchell that hasn't been said before? You know, one thing that you guys should know is that different generations feel very differently about Billy Mitchell, right? For those of us of an older generation, all right, uh, Gen Xers, right? We see this uh, high score stuff more like wrestling, really. You know, it's just a bunch of smack talking. It's more like your uncle, you know, that one uncle that claimed that he could be a, I don't know, pro football player or that, you know, other uncle that said he could have been a soccer star except that he hurt his knee type stuff. And they call themselves this and that and the other, right? Like I could just say, you know, I'm the best rapper in my car or the best singer in my shower. So when people say, hey, you know, I'm the best, you know, I'm the player of the century, video game player of the century, it's kind of sort of like that, right? That's how our generation takes it. So we have like a soft spot for guys like, you know, Billy Mitchell, like Tolerico, they're claiming all this stuff. But of course, we're not engaged in business with them, right? And most of the time, most people don't even understand what business they're in. And they don't really give a shit. They don't care about high scores. Nobody gives a shit who, <laughs> who the highest, uh, you know, Pac-Man player or Donkey Kong or anything else. Like, you really have to be in that specific niche. And back in the day, it was nice to know, but it's not that important. Today's generation, with so much information, you know, everybody gets really uh, on the you know, crossing their uh, T's and dotting their I's when it comes to tournaments and all this stuff. And I'm not saying it's wrong, guys, right? Like, I'm not criticizing, you know, people for doing that. You know, if, if that's, you know, the way you feel, great. You know, we just don't care either way, right? But Bill Mitchell did care, right? And this is a, a, a big uh, warning for a lot of people, I guess. First of all, let me say that this is not, legal advice of any kind at all, right? <laughs> We're just talking shit here. <laughs> We're just looking at situations that should have never happened, right? By people with a lot of egos, with a lot of um, bravado and, and also love talking shit, you know? And then when um, things don't go their way, they say, I'm going to sue. You know, whenever you have somebody that says, I'm going to sue, I'm going to sue, Nobody that's ever been in a lawsuit ever says that. And with Billy Mitchell, what he did is, you know, he was suing everybody, right? So eventually somebody's going to sue back, right? And when you get into lawsuits, eventually somebody's going to depose you. Eventually you're going to have to testify. And this is a route that a lot of people take, is getting you either deposed or on the stand and make you talk. And if you like to talk, this is a bad, bad place for you. Let me tell you why. I want you to go and look at uh, Carl Jobs. And I'll probably put a link in the description on, on his video, his latest video, Billy Mitchell. Now, Billy Mitchell, even if you have a spot, uh, soft spot for him in your heart, in this position his lawyer had to constantly remind him just to answer the question, not to give any more information out than he was asked, right? Uh, and again, you have to listen to your lawyer. That's why they're professionals. And this is why you don't do this stuff. You don't forward information that they didn't ask you. But Billy Mitchell in this deposition looked like he had diarrhea of the mouth. He was very contentious, right? And these depositions, nobody's going to decide anything there. You just need to answer questions. And a lot of times, depending on what side you're on, all you're doing is really giving enough rope to the other person to hang themselves, right, with by giving misstatements, you know, and, and just not saying, oh, you know, I don't remember this correctly. And as you get older, guys, you, you forget stuff. Let me tell you, it's not easier to, to remember everything that's ever happened in your life once you get in your 50s. Uh, just ask Billy Mitchell. He didn't remember being the, on the board of directors. And now uh, Carl Jobs found something that says that he is. Now, is that going to be, you know, the, the, the clincher? 
I don't think so, right? And and uh, and it's nothing to do against his research or anything. He might be right on what he found, but lawyers are lawyers. What is he going to say? He's going to say, "Hey, you know what? They did that without my consent or something." You know, they'll come up with something, right? Um, so even though in the court of public opinion, we could see clear as day what's going on. Um, in the court system, it might be something different. And this is a tactic that if you really want to get into the completionist, right, even though he might try to come at you and said, you defame me because you said I embezzled and technically I didn't embezzle. Did I use the money for what I said I was going to use it? No, I didn't. I'm a fucking liar. I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> but that's not illegal. And that's completely different than being an embezzler, which is what you accused me of, right? So if you're on, on, on the other side of this, and now that Carl Jobs has this, he's going to put him on the stand because the completionist is another person that has a huge ego. He loves to talk, right? And I don't see him <laughs> staying quiet in a deposition. So... If it ever gets to this, and I, I know people are saying, oh, because he said he wasn't going to do it, he's not going to do it. Guys, if you have, if your business is done, right? If your business is done, right now he's losing about 26% about it from his Patreon, right? It may be just there, but it's already cost him a lot of money in viewership, in money straight from, you know, any future donations. Indie Land is over. I mean, YouTube is over but this is what his identity has been for over what over 10 years now at least the, the the time he's been doing this charity crap 15 years whatever the hell it is you're not going to let go of business just like that you're going to try to do something to fight it and if if he made those statements uh on his response video they were clearly written by a lawyer and that's the opinion of other lawyers it's not just bravado. It's just not blowing up, you know, blowing smoke up your ass. It's because that's what he's been instructed to do. And, you know, attorneys aren't cheap, right? That that statement didn't cost him, uh, you know, zero money. Writing up that statement cost him at least $3,000 minimum, minimum, right? Uh, and that's just for the, for the retainer. And then when he, you know, I'm sorry, that's without the retainer. That's just for the statement. So say your retainer is ten grand, and now you you know they write up a statement that's another three grand. You're thirteen to fifteen thousand dollars in just with that statement, plus the money that you've already lost, plus the more more videos that are coming, which is really what he wants to stop. It's not that he wants it to go away. He just doesn't want any more videos made on the same subject. On the same things and the best way to shut those up is to start legal proceedings of some kind right making statements of some kind and making sure that mudahar and jobs don't make any more statements of any kind because the more videos they make the worse he looks all right guys my wife came in we have to get stuff ready and uh, we're going to be going to elo elo today and it's about five in the morning here so I hope you can appreciate the overtime work that's being done. And guys, Billy Mitchell, you should never suit anybody, dude. Just, you know, old timers out there, if you have your records, it's not our time anymore, man. You don't, you don't have to be the best <laughs> at Space Invaders or Donkey Kong or anything else. And guys, to me, these titles are, are they're all crap, right? Because you could say you're the best at whatever machine you're the best in but there's some guy in maybe in pakistan or in you know china or you know somewhere in, in the middle east or or the eastern Bloc countries wherever right that they're playing that they're not recorded right they're not part of the american gaming system so you don't know whether they're the best or not you could say you're the best in the world but it doesn't mean anything Right. It's just a title for yourself. So don't take this stuff so seriously. And I'm speaking to my generation. If somebody says that you're not the champion, that's OK. You call yourself the champion. As long as you don't go to court, everything's good. But if you do end up going to court, then you might end up like Billy Mitchell. I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.